All right, hey guys, I'm gonna show you real quick some different methods to enhance and upscale some lower resolution images. Um, the lower resolution the image, the harder it's gonna be. I'm just gonna go over some pretty easy and quick methods just to get you guys started. So um, we're gonna be working, with, basically, you wanna find the highest resolution image you can and we'll start from there. Uh, for example, let's say I wanted to take this picture which is not even 720p and make it a 1080p wallpaper. Uh, looking at it right now, it looks pretty good. But if you were actually zoom in, you notice we start to get some artifacting and some pixelation, and it's not it's not so great. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to be using GIMP today, which is a free image editing software, and we're just going to be using that to edit our picture. So the first thing we need to do is actually get the picture. If you just found one online, or if you downloaded one, you can drag and drop it into the GIMP window, or if you have one online, you can just right click and copy image, and then paste it in here. All right, now that we have it in GIMP, we can start working on it. The first thing we're going to want to do is actually make it higher resolution. Because as you see right now, it's tw uh, 1200 by 645. Um, it normally, if you use it in Windows and you put this as your wallpaper, it would just stretch the image, which basically just makes everything look worse. Uh, we can't make it better, but we can try to scale it better than Windows. Basically, we can't actually make this look better than the original image, which is right here but we can make this look the best it possibly can when stretched. So the first thing we're gonna try to do is we're gonna use uh, GIMP's super cool scaling methods. So there are a few of them, you click image, scale image, and you'll see the resolution here. Uh, if you wanna change the aspect ratio, you can uncheck this, but I wouldn't suggest doing it. Let me just show you what aspect ratio is in case you're new to this. So aspect ratio is the relation between the width and the height. So if, for example, if you have aspect ratio on, anytime you try to scale it, it will still be the same shape. So it will still look pretty decently good. Nothing will look weird or fat or skinny or whatever. But if you turn off aspect ratio scaling, then you can scale it however you want, which may look better. And again, if you're doing minor adjustments, it's usually fine, but when you start to adjust it a little bit too much, as you can see, everything gets squished and everything just starts looking really weird. So today we're gonna to be focusing on using the default aspect ratio. Um, unfortunately, if it's not in, uh, 16 by 9 it will give you black bars on your monitor or some parts of it will be cut off but we'll, we'll focus on that in another video uh, or you can just crop the image so if you type in your width of your monitor like mine is 1920 because it's 1080p if you click the bottom box it will tell you what the height should be for the aspect ratio as you can see it's a little bit shorter than 1080p so it won't look perfect and the next thing we'll need to do is look at interp uh, quality or what type of interpolation is going to be used. I find the best one to be sync, but you can play around with these if you want and just see which one you like best. If you don't like what you got, you can just press, just press Control-Z and undo it. All right, so as you can see, it has now been upscaled. And if you take a look, it actually looks better than if you were to zoom in. Notice that this one looks a little bit sharper than the actual original image. And that's not because this image is more detailed than the original one, but that's because when you zoom in on Windows or using Chrome or whatever, all it does is just make the pixels larger. So it doesn't do any fancy processing. With GIMP, using that scaling mode I showed you, we can process it so it makes the stretched image look better than just the blurry stuff you get from Windows. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and try to apply some filters. So by default, like I said, it looks way better stretched up, but as you can see, we got some weird dithering going on. Basically, we got a bunch of colors side by side that are supposed to show detail, but they just look kind of pixely because this was in the original image. We had all these little pixels, but they were much smaller, so they didn't look as bad. Now that we stretch them up, they kind of look kind of obvious. So there are a few ways you can do this. Um, one would be the slowest possible way is where you select individual pixels, and you using either the magic wand tool to select all the pixels, pixels of that color in an area, like boop, or the, bleh, or the select color option where you select all pixels of a similar color in your entire picture and then you can run filters that way, or you can run on the whole image at once. Obviously doing it in small parts of the time will give you the best detail, but it will also be the most time consuming. So before you make any big change, you wanna back up your image. Um, the easiest way to do that is just make a copy of the layer here. Um, then you can select whichever layer you wanna look at. You can turn off the eye if you wanna hide whatever layer. Um, and it's best that you name them. The name's not important, but it'll help you remember. So we're gonna try this test. We're gonna call this test one. All right, as you can see, we now, using the magic wand, we were able to select all the green of this one shade in this area. So there are a few different options you have. You can simply just blur it, 
and that's using a standard blur tool. As you can see, it looks a lot neater, but as you can see, there's a bunch of holes in our thing. So let's go back. Um, if you want to fill in the holes, if it's like one pixel, you, if you zoom in a lot, you see it's one square. That's probably like one pixel. So um, I think that might have been actually two, but either way. Uh, if you have a few holes, you may just want to increase your selection. So you go to select, grow, one. And then, hey, look, all our holes are gone. So we're working on one patch of grass just for the super slow method. Filter, blur, blur. All right, and as you can see, it looks a little bit nicer, especially zoomed in. Zoomed out, look at that, looks the same. Zoomed in, looks better. Zoomed in more, looks better. And comparison, I'm gonna to toggle off the layer we just did. I'm gonna call this blur, just change the name. As you can see, so for some people, you may prefer to look with the extra detail, but for others, especially if you're using a really small image, you may prefer to have it a little bit blurred. The problem is this is a very, very basic blur, so it doesn't do a great job. So we're gonna call this original. Now we turn off the eye so we don't have to look at our blurred layer. Um, we're gonna try the same thing again using a different blur layer, a different blur method. So we're gonna copy our original, make sure original copy is selected uh, or whatever one you just got the copy from. Uh, we have test one up here, which I thought I called blur. Blur one. And then we have original copy. Make sure you select that. Then you just select your grass again if you need to. And then if you need to fill in the holes, just increase your selection. If for whatever reason you still have holes after increasing it by one, you can keep increasing it a little bit just to try to get full coverage. All right, and as you can see now, our pix pixelation's back. This time we're going to use a more advanced blur method. So we're going to go to filters, blur, and we're going to use selective Gaussian blur. Click on that. We got some options you can mess around with, but for now we're just going to use the default ones. Again, feel free to play around with these. Just make some copies beforehand. And as you can see, it's also blurred. But the difference is this is a little bit smoother if you ask me. I'll show you what I mean. So. Here's blur number one. As you can see, we still got some of the detail, but the actual detail that's left over from the original looks a little bit worse. It just looks soft. So if you don't like that, you can try this next blur method. As you can see, ever so slightly, it looks cleaner. So again, that's just another option. So we're gonna call this. Blur two. I spelled that wrong, whatever. All right, so those are the two of the easiest ways to do it. Let's try a third method. Let's make another copy of original. Make sure these are turned off so you're not looking at them. Make sure you click on it so that's the one you're working with because whatever layer you click on, even if you can't see it, is what you're messing with. Make sure you still have your grass selected. I showed you how to do that. Filter, enhance, unsharpen mask. All right, so here's the last option. This has a bunch of fun sliders, but you don't want to mess with too much. So you can kind of get a little idea of the preview. Um, no. uh, so basically, this is a little bit more tricky, but if you move these sliders ever so slightly, you can affect the way that the actual uh, filter works. Basically, threshold is how much is applied with the filter. Radius is how big the little circles it tries to fix are. So you gotta be careful with that. Look, a simple change of that already made it so the entire grass is a different shade. So unfortunately there's no reset button, you just have to click cancel and then you click filters and there's a reshow option that will show what you whatever you open last. So you gotta be really careful with this. I say you just use these little arrows and tweak it till you get what you like. Unfortunately it's really small so you can't really tell. But go ahead and apply it. And as you can see, this offers a whole different um, deal. This actually makes it look a little bit more pixely. And who knows, maybe that's what you wanted. So, oops. This makes it look a little bit more pixely, but who knows, maybe that's what you wanted. More like high definition pixels, if you want to call it that. All right, so here's what this one looks like with the unsharpened. Here's the original. It mainly looks like it's just a little bit brighter, but again, it will vary with your image. All right, so one other thing we can do to try to make these a little bit sharper is using the sharpen option. So let's go to blur one, which was our simple, quick and easy blur. We're gonna copy this. 
and we're gonna call this blur one sharp. All right, so what we wanna do is look at what we blurred, highlight it again. As you see now it selects everything, which is nice. Make sure you have visible and selected layer working with. Filter, enhance, and sharpen. All right, so this tool is kind of intense so you got to be really careful with it. Basically, have it too low, you get no effect. Have it too high, you get this effect. So you want to find like a good medium. You want to basically look at what gives you like a nice little bit of pixelation, but not too much. As you can see, like, if you want, you can start back here at the very end and just back down until it doesn't look too intense. Uh, I wish there was a way to zoom in on this. Anyway. Um... Then just, I think that looks good, press OK. As you can see, it brought some of the pixelation back. And you may say, like, why, if we just got rid of it, why would we want it back? Well, that's the thing. Um, the original pixelation was from a much lower resolution image, so that pixelation we had before for the extra detail was really blurry. So hopefully by creating our new pixelation in the HD, and the H, yeah. So hopefully by having our new pixelation that we just generated, it will be in a higher resolution, so it may look a little bit better. Than, the, than just stretching the old pixelation. Basically making our details sharper. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here's our original, let's zoom in. And here's the sharpened. Not much of a change, but as you can see, especially on this side over here, there's a little bit of extra pixelation. And it looks like it moved it around a little bit. So it's definitely not exactly the same, but again, it's up to you if you think this looks better. Let's look at it from a distance. Original, sharpened. Yeah, not much of a difference. Let's try blur twos method with a little bit of extra sharpening. Duplicate it. I just turned off that one. All right, so we're just looking at this grass mainly. And filter, let's highlight it first. I use the magic wand in case you're wondering. Filter, enhance, sharpen. Same thing, make sure it's not too high, not too low. But if you want to get that pixelated effect, you do want to look for a little bit on the higher end. All right, and let's try that. All right, and this gives us like a whole different pattern. Look at that, that's weird. Let's see how it looks. Original. As you can see, there's pixelation on the side, pixelation here, copy. It's like a whole different pattern. From farther away, original, copy. See, I kind of like this because it gives you a, still a little bit of the pixelation feel, but you don't have to like stare right at it, as you can see here, versus normal blur would have no pixelation. This adds just a little bit. It's ever so faint, but it's still there, as opposed to the original where it's just literally everywhere. So basically, this mainly just gives you pixelation on the outsides, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Again, may not be for everyone, may not look great on every image, but it is an option. So now, we could do the third option, the third blur, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, now I'm going to show you how to do your entire image like this. In case you're really lazy or you just want to get it done fast, you can do this on your entire image at once, but it will not look as good. Because if you're doing one color at a time, the filters work way better. But let's say you didn't have much time. So copy our original. We're going to call this blur one full. So what we're going to do is just select the whole entire image, control A. And then we're going to do filter, blur, and just a normal blur. And it doesn't look like there was much of a change. But if you zoom in, everything's super blurry. Original, blurry. Original, blurry. So what we're going to do is just like before, make sure everything is selected, control A, filters, enhance, sharpen, and you got to be really careful now since you're working on the whole image at a time. Um, some things may get super bright like that, and it can really mess up some of your textures. So you just want to be real careful. Again, control Z is your friend. As you can see, hey, look, it's not blurry anymore. Uh, since we resharpened it at a higher resolution, it may give you a better look. Not always. Probably not most of the time, but it's worth a try. So here you go. Original, sharpened. You can't really tell much of a difference. That's good. Uh, that means you did it well. 
So let's look at something else to see if there is anywhere we can tell the difference. All right, let's look at this grass. This is notorious grass. So look at it, look how messy it looks. And the redo, as you can see, it looks a little bit more detailed. Again, it's not you're not making the original image look better. You're just making your upscaled look better. So if you're running this at the original resolution, it would probably look a little bit worse, but whatever. So all right, as you can see, it looks a little bit more shaped than the original one, but you do lose some detail. That's the disadvantage. Anytime you try to do any of these enhancements, you may, it may look a little bit better at a higher resolution, but you will probably lose a little bit of detail. But I do like the sharper look. And finally, let's do blur two over the whole screen. All right. Okay, so here's our full image. Control A, highlight everything. Filters, blur, selective Gaussian blur. All right, as you can see, it's a little bit more potent on the full image. So if you want, feel free to move these around, turn it down some if you want. Um, since I'm doing a full, basically, just take a look at the image and see what doesn't look too cartoony. So before we're using 50, which was way too much if you're doing on the entire image. So let's knock it down a little bit. You can also change the blur radius if you want, but I say five's probably good. Just me mess with the max, just mess, just mess with the max delta first. So let's try to turn that down. And okay, I think it looks pretty good. And you gotta remember, this is really zoomed in. Okay, go ahead and press okay. And I actually really like this. Okay, some of the trees look a little bit too soft, but overall, it looks really nice. Pretty much all of the pixelation is gone. So if you wanted this as your final product, you could actually totally use this. I mean, look at look at how the well that look at how nice this grass looks. But again, it does make everything look a little bit flat. I'm gonna make this a separate layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, and then we'll try to filter. Since I know I want to see how sharpen looks on this. So we have everything selected. Control A, filters, enhance, sharpen. All right, and that looks like way too much sharpness. So let's back it down. And in case you're wondering how much, how you know it looks way too sharp is if your colors have changed and it looks like you have like black lines everywhere, that's probably too much sharp like this. See how it starts to make everything way really bright and really bold. You don't want that. So you want something halfway between this and this mess. So I say start at the end, back it down until you can barely notice it, but you still want to get some of the effects. So just find something you like, play around with it and enhance. And there you go. So as you can see, it looks a little bit sharper. Let's compare the two. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Looks a little bit brighter too. So that's just something to keep in mind. Sharpness does change the brightness a little bit. But anyway, on screen right now, I'll have all three of the different choices so you can see how they look for yourself. But again, unfortunately, it will look different for each image. That's why I showed a bunch of different methods. So try them out, see which one you like best. Anyway, I'll, if you guys have any questions, post them in the comments. Unfortunately, I don't check comments super often, but next time I'm on, I will check. Uh, I'll try to do some more videos with some more advanced techniques, but this was hopefully just enough to get you started. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.